After my Schrade review yesterday, some viewers might be concerned that there's something wrong. Well, I'm here to say if you think that's what Rock Bottom looks like, you might have never heard the name Okapi, the knife maker from the same country that brought us world-renowned spelunker and submarine expert Elon Musk. When I did my traditional international knife video a while back, a few of you thought I had overlooked Okapi's cheap ring folders. Is that what they're called? Well, I'm here to reassure you that I didn't. But before we go any further, let's take a look at the dimensions of these two more popular and large in the Okapi cheap street gang murder weapon category, like the overall length and weight. The one with the plastic handle was $8.63 shipped and known as the Big Sable Wood Handle. Blade size, cutting edge. Big Sable Wood Handle is South African for plastic. I, I assume. Handle size, grip area. The other one is the wood handle, key ring, straight lock, wood handle. And the handle is actually real non-plastic wood. And that was about, I don't know, $12. I got them off eBay. Spine thickness, handle thickness. You know what, maybe the first one was a bad eBay description. and I should give the South Africans a pass, I guess. Tallnesses, the eBay was the real shithead here. Much like the Duke Duke and the Mercator, the Okapi knives have nefarious reputations known by anyone who reads the Wikipedia description as being associated with street gangs, hoodlums, rude boys, YouTube knife dudes, probably the Russian mafia, cats that look at you before knocking things off tables, and junk drawers. The most popular of them being the ratchet one with the ring, and the other one here because I don't have a lot of self-control and we're all on an adventure together, right? So let's hold hands. The classic ring knife here, or the ratchet knife, features a, let's say, clip point blade with a wavy grind. The kind of grind that in some places looks flat and other places looks hollow. To be fair, if I made a knife, it would probably have that grind too. The plastic handle one also has a similar blade style, but not quite as big of a clip area. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say both have the same blade shape. And the clipped area here is a standard production variation, or a black eye as Chris Reeve calls it. The blade is purported to be made of carbon steel, and its thin blade stock and nearly flat grind should make it easy to sharpen. Remember, keep the blade lightly oiled if you don't want it to rust from the blood of your enemies, which is really you when you accidentally cut yourself. Let's assume deployment on both under normal circumstances is two-handed. Hold the handle with one hand, and boringly pull the blade with the other. Then yawn. The thumb nick is a familiar addition, but the blade is large enough that it's mostly a thumb nick for visual flare because you can easily pull the blade out without it. All right, let's put the plastic one aside for a while now and play dress up tactical movie star guy and flick the ring knife. The ring is there for a few things, I guess. First, to add to a bathroom key at a gas station. Two, to twirl it around your finger so no one talks to you at office parties. And three, to keep it in your hand when you fling it downward and pretend you're in a street gang. Okay, for motivation, there's one of your dealers in front of you who gets high on their own supply. This isn't hard to do. Just put your ring through the finger and fling it out away from your body real hard. You kind of have to snap your wrist a little bit. See, the ring doesn't really function as anything but a lanyard, so you don't have to pull it as you fling or do anything complicated. Just brute force. You can stand in front of the mirror and feel real cool. You do need to pull up on the ring, though, when you release the lock to close it. Just a light pull. The metal loop on the plastic one doesn't offer additional lock functionality, even though it kind of looks like it does. So when you close a knife, it lifts and moves. The plastic handled one has more tension from the metal uh, plate on the back. It's kind of like a back spring, but kind of not. So it's a harder pull open and it's not possible to fling out and downward. It's definitely a two-handed pull open. There are a few smaller three-inch blade versions of these knives, but I went big and got the standard size. The tang on the ratchet one actually has steps so it feels like when you're opening and closing it that it's kind of ratcheting. So that's why it's called a ratchet knife. The wood handle one is made from a right and left piece of wood, maybe cherry wood, I don't know, glued together it seems. There was actually a pun there, had you read the script, I used a A instead of an E. The handle on the wood one is kind of sharp on the bottom so you may want to hit it with some sandpaper. The wood seems to be stained. The outside of the wood handle one has Metal inlays on one side of moons and stars and shit and it looks real mystical. The plastic one is boring and has nothing but fake molded wood grain. The plastic handle one is slightly more comfortable of the two. Older large and could accommodate bigger, more tactical hands than my own. 
No pocket clip, although you could maybe lanyardize something on the ring or the loop, or maybe not. Comparisons, first the Okapi ring knife with the plastic handled one side by side. I think I prefer the metal ring one because you can fling it. I can't say anything about long-term durability right now, but I put my money on the plastic one being able to hold up to a little more abuse. We'll stick with the wood one though from here on out because that's the more popular of the two. They make a three and a two and a half inch bladed version of the non-ring knife and a plastic handled version of the ringed one. But I don't think a smaller version of the ringed one. Maybe they do, who cares? Now the large Duke Duke. I got this one a while back and like the larger one better than the smaller one. Not enough to use it much though, apparently. If there was a good low profile pocket clip solution to these, I might carry it more often. The collector's knives slip clip that I reviewed a while back wasn't super pocket friendly for me. Now the Mercator. This one is also a street gang knife according to the internet. That's cool. Probably my favorite of the whole bunch. And yes everyone, I am aware of the pocket clip version of this that's well over hundred US dollars shipped to the US. The maker of those must have seen what people pay for aftermarket clips here on our folding knives and said, hold my beer. Of course, spelled B-I-E-R. What else? Spyderco Caribbean, my current favorite large folding knife. However, this one is about $160 instead of $12 because the developed world has no ceiling on the ridiculous prices they'll pay for basic hand tools they barely use. I'm pretty sure we're done here. I'm a bit more of a Duke Duke or Mercator guy if I want to pretend I'm a criminal, like when I go 10 over the limit. Those knives have a bit more of a solid feel in the hand and durable. However, the Okapis are huge and light and maybe that's why they feel cheaper, I don't know. The reviews of these are always mixed online, so add this as another mixed review. I've had them for a few months now and don't use them a whole lot. So yeah, anyway, if you like this sort of review, subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment, check out my Patreon link below that allows me to afford high-end pieces like seen in this video and maybe buy some from the Amazon links below if you think you need something else for the junk drawer knife collection. Thanks for watching.